Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. We're looking at John chapter 15. In the first 17 verses of this chapter, Jesus is describing his relationship with his disciples, with those that love him, that follow him, that he has bought with his blood. And we will see that the relationship is as the metaphor of vine and the branches. But now in verse 18, he describes the relationship that these believers, Christians, will have with the world. We're looking at verse 20, where it says, Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, that if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And if they have kept my word, they will keep yours also. He begins this uh, verse by saying, remember. The word remember in the Greek is memnuo. It's the word you get your English word memnotics from. Uh, it's a word that is used to uh, recall something. You remember if you ever took piano, every good boy deserves fudge. And that reminds us of the keys. In any event, it's a menuo remember. It's a indicative, it is a statement of fact, but it is also imperative. In other words, he is making a command, don't forget. He's saying that because of the content of it. We Christians want to forget that we will be persecuted. We want to think that we're going to be comfortable in this world, that everybody's going to like us, that good people and kind people and loving people are going to be loved and respected and, and treated well. But Jesus is saying, no, remember, call to remembrance and remember the word. You know, this is interesting because the word logos is in the singular, and that means a specific word. It was the same phrase that Jesus uses, the servant is not greater than his Lord, is found in chapter 13. It's the same event. And that is where Jesus says that the servant is not greater than his Lord as he washes his disciples' feet. That him serving us causes us to serve him. Now he's saying that because he proclaimed the good news to the world, we are to do the same. And because we are connected with him as the vine and the branches, so we can expect the same treatment that he received when he was here. So that is the context. And now he uses the word, remember the word that I have spoken to you. How do we remember? Well, it's real interesting. This gospel, the gospel of John, is written in approximately 85 to 90 AD. That means it's written approximately 50 years after these events actually occurred. The majority of John's gospel, it's only 23 days that it records, but the majority of it from chapter 12 to the end is only of the last weeks. And so consequently, we're looking even at hours. How did John recall that? I have a hard time remembering what I ate two days ago, let alone what was said 50 years before, because the Holy Spirit had given him specific memory. The Holy Spirit will call to your remembrance these very same words. Don't forget, the servant is not greater than his Lord, and that we also will be persecuted just as Jesus. Now, Jesus said, if. Now, the word if sounds like it's conditional, it's hypothetical, but the word would be better translated since or because because the, he was persecuted, we can anticipate being persecuted. In fact, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution, and that it is given to us not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Now, that doesn't sound like it's a, a great promise or something that we would be looking forward to, but Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. We are more connected with our Lord in suffering than at any other time. Then it is we understand the love of the Father. 
It is then that we appreciate the love of one another that Jesus has commanded us to. It is then that we understand the power of his resurrection. So he says, if they persecuted me, they'll also persecute you. Did they persecute Jesus? Absolutely. And when you think of all the ways he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, but remember the joy that was set before him. We're living in a terrible time in history from the world's perspective. We're living in troublesome times from the world's perspective. From the believer's perspective, we are living in the times that our Lord has promised. And we also recognize that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The same Holy Spirit is giving us strength today. And then he concludes by saying, if they've kept my word, they'll keep yours. Obviously, they didn't keep our Lord's words. It's almost ironic that he says that. He is saying, again, because they didn't keep his word, they're not going to keep yours. And what is your word? He gave us the Great Commission. We were to go and to make disciples of all nations. We're to be baptizing them. That means identifying them with Jesus in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are to be teaching. That means to be teaching the things that Christ has taught us. And Jesus said at the very end of that, Lo, I am with you always. Of course he's with us always. But why did he say it then? Because as we give the word of God, as we fulfill the Great Commission, we find ourselves in hostile territory. We find ourselves facing opposition. And it's in that context that he tells us, I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I pray today that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. You know the Messiah. You know that he is Yeshua HaMashiach. And I pray also that you know him, but that you show him, that you proclaim him, because that is the world's only hope. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you so much for your faithfulness, your goodness, for your kindness, for your Holy Spirit that dwells within those who love you, know you, and love you. We ask now that you would give us courage, boldness to proclaim the truth, the word of God, the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.